Hey guys, Mike here. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can pour and finish a concrete slab when the temperatures start out well below freezing. So there's a few things that come into play when I, when I decide to pour a slab when it's this cold. Um, the first is I always watch the weather. I got to make sure it's going to be a nice day. And today, you know, the temperatures this morning were starting out really cold, as you saw, it was 15 degrees. But they, the, the weather was calling for the temperatures to get up into the 30s. So we had rising temperatures that were going to get up above freezing. And then tonight, in the next few days, the temperatures weren't going to get below freezing again. So that was one deciding factor right there. The other deciding factor is just the experience. You know, we live in Maine. Temperatures start getting below freezing in November. And they last all the way to March that way. So in 40 years you know i've poured hundreds of these slabs like this in temperatures like this so the experience factor is is definitely something that is important here i know that how i know how the concrete's going to act i know how it's going to finish and you know i was pretty confident with temperatures not getting below freezing for the next few days that the slab's going to be just fine and then the third thing is the the mix design you know, we're pouring a 4,000 PSI mix, so we got a lot of cement in the concrete. There's no slag, no fly ash, just straight cement. So that's going to help with heat hydration when this starts to set up. And then and we've got 120 degree water in the concrete too. So when they batch the concrete out, the water going into the, into the truck is 120 degrees, which is going to give us a concrete temperature in the high 70s to around 80. So we're starting out with pretty warm concrete, which is which is going to help set this stuff up really good on a day like today when it's so cold. And then we're also using an accelerator in the concrete, so that's going to even help speed up the set time even more. So and then the next thing that, that really helps us out here is pouring on top of styrofoam. So instead of getting here in the morning and pouring the concrete on top of basically what would be almost frozen ground. You never want to pour on frozen ground. But ice cold ground, which would really suck the heat right out of the concrete, we're pouring on styrofoam. And the styrofoam is actually going to help hold the heat in the concrete longer and help speed up the, the rate of heat of hydration when this stuff starts setting up here. So the styrofoam is a big, big bonus when you're pouring in freezing cold temperatures like this. And that's basically the deciding factor sometimes when we decide to pour outside in temperatures well below freezing is are we pouring on top of styrofoam or are we pouring on top of dirt that's going to be really, really cold. Um, there would be hours and hours of difference in finishing time if this didn't have any styrofoam underneath it. So we got three loads of concrete here. We got close to, close to 30 yards of concrete going in here. It's a 50 by 30 slab. You know, it's right around six inches thick. We got a, a center drain there, as you can see. Kind of hard to see, but there is a center drain there. And we're gonna be sloping. The back part of that, which we've already screeded, is, is relatively flat right there. But from where the screed is, to the drain like right here we're sloping this wet pad down towards that drain so the rest of the slabs all going to pitch towards the drain we've been we've been pulling the wire up as we've been pouring we got a double roar rebar we're setting in the outside edge for reinforcement we got fiber mesh in the concrete too so we got a double reinforcement in the concrete so this is going to be really really strong concrete when we get done so that pad right there, that wet pad, slopes about an inch and a half up to where we've already screeded. And then we generally always hand screed slabs or floors when we have a slope to them. So that's why we're hand screeding this and not using the power screed here today. But, you know, for pouring in freezing cold temperatures, and it is freezing cold, like. My fingers right now I, are numb. I can't even feel them. That, you know, the screed is cold. The the rakes are cold. The bull floats cold. All that metal that we're using is really, really cold. So every time you touch something, 
the fingers just get colder and colder. I've actually got the the black sweatshirt I have on underneath my my gray sweatshirt is uh, is a heated sweatshirt. So that really helped me out today. I had that heated sweatshirt on. I'll have a link for one of those down below. I highly recommend that. You can kind of see it. I got that black sweatshirt on underneath my gray one. And that's a battery operated heated sweatshirt. And those things are really, really nice. That definitely helped me stay warm during this pour. So we're on to the third truck now. And we're gonna I'm gonna show you how we, we finished this in. We actually got it sawed today too, so the concrete dried really, really good for as cold as it was today. This took us, you know, we started at about 6.45, and we got done pouring here right about 8 a.m. So the I checked the temperatures. It was up to about 18 degrees from 15 when we started. So it's still really, really cold. So this concrete with the warm water in it and the styrofoam under it is going to set up really, really nice, as you'll see here moving forward, even though the air temperatures are really, really cold. So let me know down in the comments how many of you guys are pouring concrete with temperatures this cold out and having good luck just like we are. Let me know down in the comments. So it's 11 o'clock now. You can see temperatures are warming up pretty good. Concrete's very, very firm under our feet. We let it get really, really firm. Luke's barely even sinking in at all, maybe a sixteenth of an inch as he's stepping on it, if that, on the first truck anyway. So we're going to get the, the slab all floated up, and as you'll see here in a minute, it's, it's once he gets it floated up, it's going to just keep drying faster and faster. So the sun's going to pop in and out here a little bit. It was relatively cloudy today. If the sun was out, you know, this would even be going faster. That would help speed up the process a lot more. It would even feel a lot warmer too, but it was, it was probably 50-50 cloudy and sun today, so... That actually slowed things down a little bit more for us. So Luke's getting that first that first truck all floated. So he's going to work his way from the first truck to the second to the third. And Darren and I are going to go around and just mag and trowel the edges out for him. I already did around the drain, as you saw just a couple seconds ago. We're also going to strip this slab today so we can get... You know, the, we'll get the, the forms and the pins and everything right out of here. And then uh, the owner can get it all covered up later on if, if he wants to cover it up with blankets and all that. At least our stuff will be all out of the way. So Luke's using the MBW power trowel, 36 inch power trowel. That's one of our favorites. We also use float blades. We don't use a pan when we float. We like the blades better. Um, let me know who, who in there likes pans and who in there uses float blades like us. And then also if you use combos. We're not a big fan of combo blades. We just never have been. We've always liked the float blades and then kick them off and then use the finish blades is what we're doing right now. So we'll lift that up with the little truck crane we got. And we'll just pop them float blades off, put the machine right back on. And Luke's going to start laying this thing down with the finish blades. You can see how much smoother the edges are by using a hand trowel versus when you float or when you pan. We always float first. That just helps knock out any bow float lines, any little humps and dips, if there are any. It just helps push down any aggregate and bring up more paste for us to finish. So we always like starting out with the float blades and then we move right to the finish blades like this. And the finish blades make it dramatically smoother even on the first hit, as you can see right there. So as we got going, you know, the the concrete is setting up really, really good for us now. Even though the temperatures are right around the freezing mark, they're right around 32 degrees right now. We've got a second trial out just to get this laid down a little bit quicker. You can see Darren's using our whitening there. we got an 8 horsepower whitening. You can see how much smoother that's making it just on the first laydown pass.
you know it's still really cold you can tell that but these guys have their sweatshirts on and their hoods up so it's about two o'clock now 34 degrees so the temperatures get up above freezing a little bit Luke's kind of shining out that last truck and Darren's already starting to saw so that that gives you an idea of how how nice the concrete sets up with that with that mixture you know the hot water the 4000 psi the accelerator in it the styrofoam underneath the concrete that's just uh, you know basically a recipe for success you know if you're gonna pour concrete in freezing cold temperatures like I said if this didn't have the styrofoam under it we'd be nowhere near this point right now it would be after dark for this for sure So we got three saw cuts going across and then we're putting one down the middle this way and that'll control the contraction joints pretty well. That's what we do for most slabs like this. But that's our basic formula for when we're pouring concrete from November to March here in Maine. You know, most of the days outside, are, at least they start out below freezing. Some of them will warm up get up above freezing but sometimes they don't if the temperatures were going to get below freezing tonight on this night we would definitely cover this with blankets or hay and plastic to keep keep the slab temperature up but it was going to be actually rising temperatures so we had no worries for that that's it guys 230 all done 35 degrees out and thanks for watching